U.S. President Donald Trump has said Washington will no longer tolerate trade abuses. Addressing the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit in Vietnam, Donald Trump said the U.S. is ready to work with APEC countries as long as they abide by fair trade. Trump further said America will no longer be taken advantage of when it comes to trade. The U.S. president also vowed to correct the trade imbalance with China and Japan. To be here in Vietnam and God bless the United States of America. Thank I do not blame China or any other country, of which there are many, for taking advantage of the United States on trade. If their representatives are able to get away with it, they are just doing their jobs. I wish previous administrations in my country saw what was happening and did something about it. They did not, but I will. From this day forward, we will compete on a fair and equal basis. We are not going to let the United States be taken advantage of anymore. I am always going to put America first, the same way that I expect all of you in this room to put your countries first. APEC brings together 21 economies, which means about 60% of the world's GDP. The U.S. president also praised India for opening its economy and achieving astounding economic growth. India is celebrating the 70th anniversary of its independence. It is a sovereign democracy, as well as, think of this, over one billion people. It's the largest democracy in the world. Since India opened its economy, it has achieved astounding growth and a new world of opportunity for its expanding middle class. And Prime Minister Modi has been working to bring that vast country and all of its people together as one. And he is working at it very, very successfully indeed. Meanwhile, the White House confirmed that there would be no separate meeting between President Donald Trump and President Putin on the sidelines of the summit. White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders said, and here I quote, Regarding a Putin meeting, there was never a meeting confirmed, and there will not be one that takes place due to the scheduling conflicts on both sides. And for more on this story, we are joined by Ramesh Ramachandran, our senior correspondent who is currently reporting from Manila. Ramesh, thank you very much for joining us on the broadcast. So a global event is taking place. Uh, the President of the United States is touring five Asian countries today. He has praised the Prime Minister Narendra Modi and said he will try to work for bring back balance between the trade deficit on China and Japan. What more updates can you give us? Well, Daniele, it is significant that uh, President Trump of the U.S. should mention about India and Prime Minister Modi at a forum of which India is not a member, that is uh, APEC or the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation. And therefore, to my mind, it is a significant uh, statement uh, of intent and purpose on the part of President Trump to talk about India and Prime Minister Modi in the same breath. Now, that said, President Trump is uh, attending the APEC summit, uh, and from there, he will arrive here in Manila for the ASEAN and East Asia summits over the next couple of days. And that, to my mind, is also significant because, remember, East Asia summit is the de facto mechanism or grouping to decide on the affairs of the Asia-Pacific region, which incidentally, Daniele, is now being called the Indo-Pacific region, implying thereby that the U.S. and its allies want India to play a more high-profile, high-visibility role in the region and beyond. So clearly, India is the flavor of the season, as it were, in East Asia today. And Ramesh, when it comes to this role that India could actually play in this collective meeting, what are we talking about? Are we talking about an economic role? Are we talking about a political role? Are we talking about a security role? Could you please highlight us a bit? 
Well, Daniele, if you talk about the ASEAN and East Asia summits, now by virtue of the fact that these countries, the 10 ASEAN countries, happen to be located in a region which is known, which is now known as the Indo-Pacific region, it implies economic, political, and security interests of converging or co in, in a coinciding of all countries in the region and beyond, especially the U.S., China, Russia, and India. And to that extent, uh, the leaders here, including Prime Minister Modi, can be expected to talk about political and security matters, including the rules-based order in the South China Sea, uh, respecting territorial integrity of countries in the region, and also not trying to unilaterally change the status quo in the region. So these issues will be high on the agenda of Prime Minister Modi and other leaders attending the East Asia Summit in the next few days here in Manila in the Philippines. And also, uh, the United States endorsed uh, very much India. This is one more sign also of, uh, I would say, an increasing relation between uh, the United States and uh, India. This is not new, because even President Obama tried to uh, th trade, I would say, this relation with India. Why in the United States do you think right now, in this very historic moment, to think that India might be, let's say, their strongest ally in Asia, Ramesh? Daniel, interesting question. Uh, one year ago when President Trump took office uh, in the U.S., uh, the, the expectation was that uh, President Trump uh, would not be heavily invested in Indo-Pacific as his predecessor Barack Obama was. But one year on, we find that President Trump is making the right moves in the region, which has gone down actually very well with New Delhi. The only glitch as far as I can see, is India's hesitation to formally accept or endorse the quadrilateral initiative which involves India, the US, Japan and Australia. But there again, one, one can expect officials from these four countries, namely India, the US, Japan and Australia, to meet here in Manila after a gap of 10 10 years or more than a decade, Daniele, and that is significant given the anxieties which has been caused in the region by China's so-called peaceful rise. So the quadrilateral initiative is something to look forward to in Manila in the days to come. And what you just say, Ramesh, kind of leads me into the further question, which is obviously about, let's say, the elephant in the room, which means China. China has been witnessing the U.S. nearing more and more India, and China is witnessing right now a very important event. As you say, it's 10 years that these four, this quadrilateral junction has not been meeting. Therefore, how is China likely to manage in order not to be, let's say, kept aside during this round of talks and meetings? Well, Daniele, going by the statements uh, coming out of Beijing, they clearly do not want to see the quadrilateral as a move to gang up against China, to gang up against a third party or a country, namely China in this case. And that's been China's position uh, consistently throughout, including way back in 2007 when the Quad was first uh, proposed by Japan and Australia joined in, but then we saw Australia back out of the Quad. And for the last decade or so, the Quad uh, laid, you know, laid dormant for a long, long time. But now, after President Trump in office, we're seeing the revival, or the first signs of a revival of the Quad and that uh, has caused anxieties in China and it remains to be seen how this will play out on the bilateral aspect of the India-China relationship going forward, especially given the standoff on the Doklam Plateau which uh, pit India against China uh, you know, in, in, in a very, very serious manner and the consequences might there be for all to see. And right now, Ramesh, we are watching on our television screens uh, direct live uh, footage coming uh, from the gala event which is being uh, held right now at the venue where also our correspondent uh, um, was talking about uh, in Vietnam. Uh, this is a part of the five nation tour that President Donald Trump is currently overtaking around Asia. He has been in China, very interesting meeting. He is now landing in Vietnam and he's expected to land in Manila for the Asian summit this year. And Ramesh, if I can go back to you, I understand that you're still with us. I have another question for you. Do you see any role, if possible, for India in the South China disputes, obviously to the best of your knowledge? Well, China, India, Daniel, is not a direct party to the disputes in the South China Sea, but by extension, 
India can certainly be expected to play a part in managing the affairs of the region, especially when it comes to the global commons, allowing freedom of navigation and movement. And so, therefore, to that extent, uh, India is also invested heavily in the South China Sea. But that, that said, Daniel, India is also in touch with other countries in Southeast Asia, namely Vietnam, for instance, where the APEC meeting is being held. Uh, India, you know, is, is pursues an Act East policy, which is a formerly known as the Look East policy, and Southeast Asia plays a key role in India's Act East policy, and in terms of connectivity, in terms of cultural connect, political issues, security cooperation, especially with Vietnam. Remember, India has offered Vietnam the BrahMos missiles, which were jointly produced by India and Russia. So security is, an, is a, in an important balance to the relationship with India and Southeast Asia and the ASEAN countries, and therefore, by extension, India is a vital player in the wider Indo-Pacific region and the expectation here in Manila and the other ASEAN countries is that India will become a net provider of security in the Indo-Pacific region and beyond, especially extending all the way from Gulf of Bay in the west to the South China Sea in the east. But Ramesh, it seems that India was not exactly on the same page of the United States when it comes to try to blockade all the business between countries like India and North Korea. So I think that is very much on the top of the agenda of Trump. If you can sum up for the time being what actually Trump achieved and what he could not achieve when it comes to confronting North Korea. Well, Daniel, if you look at President Trump's uh, Asia tour, the Five Nation tour, which began in Japan, took him to Seoul in South Korea, and then to Beijing in China, and now to Vietnam, and in two days' time to Manila in the Philippines here, the clear pattern emerging. North Korea was front and center of President Trump's uh, visit, the longest in 25 years, a 12-day visit by any president in the last 25 years. And that, to my mind, speaks uh, volumes about America's anxieties and interests in, in this region. But that said, uh, one can expect uh, you know, discussions to figure about uh, code of conduct in the South China Sea, with many ASEAN countries now wanting a binding code of conduct which, which will apply equally to China in the region and that to my mind is high on the agenda of the ASEAN countries and some indication of it will be available in the outcome document towards the end of the ASEAN and East Asia summits here in Manila. And Ramesh, we are hearing also that there have been some protests in Manila itself against Donald Trump. You might have not come across those protests in your movement within the city, but do you fear there is an atmosphere of tension in the city of Manila regarding this protest and the arrival of Donald Trump, or we are talking about a minority of citizens? Daniele, we've seen a protest being held in Seoul in South Korea against President Trump, and the same has been seen in Manila, where there's a tight security blanket around the venue and uh, traffic is at a standstill for the next three or four days till the, the leaders are here in Manila. And they're given to understand that the government has given holiday for the government employees, schools and establishments are closed for the next couple of days. And that should give you an, a sense of the kind of importance and security is being attached to this, uh, this big event here in Manila. Uh, and it's, 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 it's evident if you travel on the streets outside, on the roads outside, this complete security blanket, uh, not even even you know, an ordinary person cannot walk without proper identification or a badge uh, provided by the government. So clearly, things are uh, you know, being put in place here for the arrival of the dignitaries over the next couple of days here in Manila. Thank you very much, our senior international correspondent Ramesh Ramachandran, giving us a very valuable input directly from Manila.